Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am, I post videos pertaining to a little bit of whatever I want, conspiracy theories, controversial people, true crime, vlogs, and all things spooky, scary, scary things. So if you're into any of that, you can subscribe and if not, totally chill, like do not worry about it. We are just here to talk about some spooky conspiracy theories. I do want to say before this video starts, just kind of get it out of the way. If it sounds like I'm sick, it's because I am. It's not COVID, but I do have a cold and I lost my voice like a couple days ago and I lost it for a couple of days. Today we are going to be doing another conspiracy theory video. Oh my god, I love doing conspiracy theory videos. But before getting into the rest of today's video, I do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Fabulous. Fabulous is a digital coach or happiness trainer that uses behavioral science to help you become a better you and start making steps towards your goals. For me personally, I have a lot of struggles when it comes to keeping habits. Like for example, say I wanna start eating a healthy breakfast every morning. I'll literally like have avocado toast or some healthy breakfast for like two days. And then after that, I slowly kind of break my habit and go back into old habits. Just trying to keep those habits a part of my routine and trying to get it to stick. But with Fabulous, it is 100% personalized. So you can choose between habits tracking which is basically just receiving reminders to do your good habits or dedicated programs where you can be more focused on improving your well-being and being sent gentle reminders to stay on track, letters, inspiring messages, and getting help in navigating how to make you a better you. Fabulous makes it extremely easy for anyone to develop and stick to good habits. Thanks to their science-backed daily routines, you will go to sleep at night feeling so much more healthier, more fulfilled, motivated, productive. Fabulous is very, very fun and rewarding. I remember when I first started Fabulous, the first thing that they encourage you to do is wake up every morning and drink water. And I remember the first day, like I drank water and I checked it off of my little habit tracker list. It like, the screen said like, bravo, there was music. It was like an entire like beautiful slide, just like congratulating me. And although it was a small step, Fabulous made it feel like a lot bigger of a step and I feel like that's very very important because sometimes things that we think are small are actually very big because they are steps to make us a better us and with fabulous premium you can get so many amazing different add-ons such as meditation yoga ambiance and one of my personal favorite bedtime stories plus you get access to coaching live challenges and so so many other really cool add-ons that you just have to try. And the first 100 people to click the link down below will get 25% off their Fabulous subscription. And so since it's the first 100 people, you gotta act fast, you gotta click down there, and honestly, you know, out of side, I truly do love Fabulous. I found it very, very helpful in my daily routines. I feel like it genuinely is such a cute little like self-care app and the fact that it's like backed up by science as well, that's how you know it's really going to help you and things are actually gonna stick. And even if you know you're not the first 100 people, that's completely okay. I still recommend you to get the app. And again, thank you to Fabulous for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your video. Now let's get into our very first conspiracy theory that I think is very, very interesting, and it's corporate manipulation. It is very widely known that companies or brands will manipulate their consumers into buying more than what they need. So let's start off with one corporation that has been said to manipulate their consumers, and that is movie theaters. This one is kind of like a quick tale but it's very very interesting nonetheless to me at least in that since the pandemic you know movie theaters was the very first thing to shut down during the pandemic and so because of that and also with all of these new movies coming out on purely streaming platforms instead of actual movie theaters which honestly that 
whole thing, the demise of movie theaters and where it stands in the next couple of years is a whole video on itself. Because of that, you know, movie theaters have really been struggling to make their bags. So what they do now and what a lot of people have noticed is if you've been to a movie theater quite recently, I would say in the past six months, you probably noticed that their trailers are extremely longer than what they used to be. That's not on accident. They are purposely making their trailers longer in the beginning. You're gonna get more hungry throughout the movie because you just ate all of the food in the beginning, thus making you want to spend more money and go back into the lobby and get some more food or more snacks. Now the next corporation that tends to use corporate manipulation is grocery stores. Now, I hope you're still sticking around because this one is absolutely insane. The conspiracy theory goes that grocery stores will use a set of corporate manipulation tactics in order to manipulate their consumers into buying more product. A couple of ways that they do this that, you know, even me personally, I did not even really realize until this was pointed out to me. The next time you go into a grocery store or you can just simply imagine, haven't you kind of noticed that every time you enter into the grocery store, you're immediately greeted with the bakery section of the grocery store. Now this is kind of odd because usually you know you don't go to the grocery store for baked goods but the reason why they put the bakery right by the front doors is because of course fresh baked good, fresh baked bread, it smells the most appealing. You're just greeted with all of these different appealing smells and so these appealing smells make you hungry and if you shop while you're hungry you're more inclined to buy more things but the real things that you need at the grocery store are basic items such as eggs milk and bread if you think back to maybe you know your personal grocery store that you always go to or the next time you go into a grocery store if you notice the milk, the eggs, the bread, all of the typical items that you need are always placed in the way back of the store. Meaning, in order to get there, the consumer needs to walk through the entire store, then making you wanna buy more things in order to get to the thing that you need. As I said, that's why most of us tend to walk out of the store with a lot more than what we needed. If you've ever been in a grocery store where there's like the two aisles, right? And then the in-between part of the two aisle that sits on the outside, there's products on that, you know, end of the aisle. Thinking about it logically, that kind of makes no sense because if you wanted, you know, a certain food product, wouldn't you just go to that aisle? Why would there be food on the end of the aisle? And that is because, you know, when you're scrolling down with your little cart, you're looking down all these aisles, your eyes are naturally gonna go to the end of the aisle. This food is like very random. Like sometimes it's juices, sometimes it's chips. You, the consumer, are looking at these things and you're like, oh, I need that thing. Although I wasn't going in the aisle to get that thing, I need that thing. And so you then buy more than what you need. Now this is another thing that grocery stores are said to do and it kind of goes along if you guys have ever heard of that Disneyland conspiracy theory where they use these things called smellitizers and smellitizers are basically like filters sort of that they put in the vents of the amusement park and they pump out the air of like fresh baked goods to get the consumer hungry and want to buy food or the scent of money so that the consumer is thinking of money and wanting to spend money at the gift shops and things like that. Similar to Disneyland, it is said that these smellitizers are used in grocery stores as well. And they basically pump out the smell of money so you're thinking of money and wanting to spend more money. And they also pump out the smell of fresh baked goods or cookies or cupcakes just 
just like the sweetest of smells to make you the most hungry this actually makes sense to me personally because there's been so many times where i was in the store and i literally bought like the most random ingredient and i was like oh i'm gonna buy this because i'm gonna make a recipe with this and then i take it home and i never use it or i never eat it and i feel like i'm not alone on that a probably you know a lot of other people do that as well and it's also been said that these smellitizers are not just going throughout the walls of the store but they also pump it out outside of the store so even before you walk into the store you're immediately hungry it kind of reminded me of all of the times where you're about to walk into a grocery store and you get like a big whiff of restaurant food or you're like oh like it smells so good there's probably a restaurant around here how would that make sense that we're smelling the inside of a restaurant when the restaurant is like very far away has closed doors and even if you were to walk into that restaurant it probably wouldn't smell as good as it does outside very very creepy i'm never going to a grocery store again i am just gonna do everything online but even online you are not safe and i will like i'll talk about that in a little bit but let's not get too ahead of ourselves so that's all i could really find when it came to grocery stores but the next corporation manipulation that i found came from malls this is something that i notice in the mall that i frequently go to basically kind of like the grocery store conspiracy theory in that when you walk into a grocery store why are you immediately confronted with the bakery now same thing goes for malls if you guys have ever been in the type of mall where the front doors of the mall isn't even like the front doors of the mall, you basically have to walk through another store to get to the actual mall. These stores typically include like a JCPenney or a Macy's or even like a grocery store. Why in the world would you walk through an entire store to get to the mall. They do this on purpose so as soon as you walk in the store, you're immediately stimulated by all of these different products that you don't need but you think you need. And even if you don't walk out of the store buying anything, you walk into the mall with that mentality that you want to buy something and typically you do buy something. I mean, how many times have you bought something from the mall and then you end up like wearing that thing maybe two or three times and then never wearing it again. The last topic of this conspiracy theory that I found that was really, really interesting, and that is when you're in the store and something is on sale. Whenever you walk into a store, doesn't matter what it is, a clothing store, a grocery store, a hardware store, as soon as you walk in, big, bright, red, and yellow signs, which again, yellow and red are proven to be the colors that capture the human eye's attention the most, so... That in itself is kind of, you know, like, look at me, look at me. Why is it that everything is constantly on sale? You know, there has to be a reason because don't you think if you are docking down the price lower than what it used to be, the company would be inevitably just losing money? Well, there was this one Redditor who took a photo at the grocery store of what is said on the label to be a camping cot. On this camping cot, it basically said that this product used to be $30, but they brought down the price to $25. Again, super bright and in your face, red and yellow. But when this Redditor peeled back the sticker tab to reveal the original price, the original price of this camping cot was $25. So in actuality, this product was never on sale because the sale price was the same as the original price. After seeing that photo, every time I see a sale sign or something, I'm like... You can't get me. I know your tricks. I'm coming in here for bread and I'm closing my eyes all the way back. And this tactic basically saying that something is on sale when it's not really on sale, they're just selling it for the original price or maybe they're not selling it for the exact original price, but maybe like 
two or three dollars less. This is a very widely known thing that happens, which again, I had no clue they did this. Amazon Prime Day has been exposed multiple times for doing this sort of tactic for docking down the prices on something that the sale price was basically the original price. And I'm not saying that every single sale you see is not a real sale because of course that would be way too obvious and similar to online shopping like I was saying earlier a lot of online shopping if there is a sale going on they will purposely put a couple of really good deals like actual really good deals at the way top so as you're going through to the bottom you just kind of assume that everything is a great deal because the couple of few items that you first saw were great deals this one really really made sense to me because wouldn't it just be a lot easier for the store to just simply lower the price why do they need to make it a big deal like with confetti and balloons and bright red and yellow signs why can't you just lower the price and whoever needs to buy it can buy it at a lower price so that's all i could really find when it came to corporate manipulation which again like even that alone is insane and even after like researching this topic every time i went to a grocery store i kind of like like looked around super suspicious now let's move on to our second conspiracy theory and this is cat parasites a while ago i was watching the tiny meat game podcast with cody co and noelle miller and cody co brings up cat parasites and how some cats carry a certain parasites that could actually affect humans and it's been studied to affect humans that says you heard about this like parasite have you heard about this before no okay so cats carry some parasite Okay. The parasite needs to reproduce in a cat's stomach. Okay. And what, so once it inf infects a mouse, it affects its judgment center in its brain. So okay. it's more daring. So it's more likely to get killed by a cat. What in the right? hell? So, but this also affects humans. I, apparently, there's like a super skewed number of the pe of the amount of people that die in motorcycle accidents that have cats. Like, it's super skewed to people who have cats because a lot of them have this parasite that makes them more daring. Isn't that fucking crazy? And it also makes you like cats. So it, it kind of like put a spell on you a little bit. Cats at some point in their life develop this parasite in them called Toxoplasma gondii, aka Toxoplasma. How cats can get this parasite is simply just by either eating a infected rodent or some sort of like bird, or they can also be affected by simply smelling the feces of another cat that is affected with Toxoplasma. Once this Toxoplasma plasma parasite has entered the cat's system. The parasite lasts in the cat for about two weeks. There's no visible signs to see if your cat does have toxoplasma. The only way to really find out if your cat does have toxoplasma is to get it tested. Just want to apologize. Did not mean to call a cat an it. That sounded a little disrespectful to all the little kittens out there. Sorry, you guys. Sorry, you guys. Did not mean to say it meant to say just cat. You need to get your cat tested, not it tested. Okay, anyway. Over the course of the two weeks, the cat just simply poops out this parasite until it's just sort of all gone. Two professors from the University of Colorado by the name of Stephanie K. Johnson and Peter Johnson, they did a study on toxoplasma and hypothesized the possibility that this may not just affect cats, but humans as well. They took a bunch of cats that were affected with toxoplasma and they took the cat's feces and put it in a box with a bunch of lab rats. Over the course of the couple of days, as these lab rats kept on consuming this cat feces infected with the toxoplasma, they realized that the effects of this toxoplasma on the rats made them more daring and actually affected the judgment center of their brain. So usually, you know, rats and mice are super scared of cats, 
but once put in a room with these cats, they found that the mouse was a lot more daring towards the cat, and it kind of turned their fear of cats into curiosity. So overall, since this toxoplasma had affected the judgment center of the rat's brain, they knew what happened to rats specifically. They tried to transition the experiment from not rats, but humans. If there is a change in humans when exposed to toxoplasma. How a human can be exposed to toxoplasma or be infected with toxoplasma, as I said, how a cat gets toxoplasma, smelling cat feces that has toxoplasma in it. A lot of humans do come in contact with cat feces, such as if you have a litter box, if you clean that litter box and you're exposed to the toxoplasma in the feces, or if you're the type of person that has an unclosed litter box, so you basically just have an open litter box box that, again, cat feces and those particles in the air are just roaming around in your air, much more likely for you to be infected with this toxoplasma parasite. What does this toxoplasma even do when it is infected to a human? It was found that over 30 million people in the U.S. alone carry this toxoplasma parasite, as well as 30 to 60 percent of people worldwide. If the parasite is inside of you as a human, how does that even affect you? The results of this testing was actually very similar to the results found of the mice. With the mice, they became a lot more daring. Their fear for cats turned into curiosity. They were more likely to take life-threatening risks, and that's exactly what they found in humans as well. So they exposed a group of humans to this toxoplasma and what they found is that for about two weeks people who are exposed to this toxoplasma parasite is more likely to do more daring acts. A lot of people who had passed away in motorcycle accidents actually had cats. Now I'm not saying like if you get into a motorcycle accident you have a cat but they just found it very odd that there was a huge connection between the two. They also found that the humans that they tested for this toxoplasma are much more likely to do things like drink alcohol, do drugs, gamble. They were much more likely to take more risks as well as making split-second decisions that could get them in either trouble or hurt. They also again found a really dark link between not just motorcycle accidents but regular car accidents as well. Now I'm not saying if you have a cat you are going to be exposed to this parasite. As I said, only 30 to 60 percent of people worldwide have this parasite and similar to cats, in humans the toxoplasma only lasts for about two weeks before it just kind of goes over. The only crazy part about it though is that no one really knows when they have it unless you are specifically tested for it. So, you know, if you are a cat person, I wish I was a cat person, but I am definitely allergic to cats, so that is very embarrassing for me. If you see your cat eating a rodent or smelling the feces of another cat, just you know, take them to the vet, get them tested, make sure that they don't have this specific parasite in them because if they do, it could also affect you as well. When I was reading up on it, I was like, what the heck am I reading right now? Mostly due to all of the wild evidence that there is. I don't want you to be like turned away from getting a cat or something. Still get cats. Cats are cute. Cats are fun. Maybe this encourages you to open your eyes and realize that cats are really bad. And I'm not just saying that because I'm deathly allergic to cats and I wish I had a cat because they're so adorable and fluffy and low maintenance. That's all of what I could really find on the cat parasite. So now we're gonna move on to our third and final conspiracy theory and that is the Oz factor. This theory kind of goes hand in hand with like gut feelings and why exactly we get gut feelings. Whenever you like randomly get the 
these feelings, someone is watching you, the theory is, is that that is called the Oz factor and that someone is actually watching you, but not from your universe, from a parallel universe on the other side. So for example, like it's nighttime and you're walking down your dark hallway and then all of a sudden you get a really weird feeling that someone is watching you. Someone is indeed watching you, but you cannot see them because you are not in that parallel universe. You feel like you are no longer in your current world, but you don't feel like you're out of body. It just is in this like weird in-between. Another example of this is when you'll literally just be doing your daily tasks and then randomly you just get a weird awareness of all of your surroundings. You pay attention to everything in your room, in your car, like whatever is surrounding you. You just get this really weird sense of like, I am living on this planet, I am here, I am standing here, I am looking at those things. Your brain is a very big mystery, essentially, like even to this day, scientists have no clue why we dream. They know that it comes from like the subconscious and it's probably like something to do with your subconscious, but no one really knows why we have dreams or the significance of why we have dreams. The reason why people call it the Oz factor specifically is because if you've ever seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, basically the main character in the movie Dorothy goes off to the world of Oz. And so when she goes into this world of Oz, she's kind of in a limbo where it is her current reality because she has her dog Toto with her as well as like wearing the same clothes and holding the same things as when she left her reality but it is not her typical reality because there are munchkins and witches. So on reddit specifically there is literally an entire subreddit of people dedicated to this Oz factor and people telling their stories of how when they believed they had experienced the Oz factor. A reddit user by the name of lap77582 tells their story on Reddit of when they experienced the Oz factor by saying, quote, I was actually walking back home once and felt that sense of dread too, like someone was watching me. Seconds later, I was attacked. Luckily, the guy got spooked, but it was still crazy how our intuition kicks in prior to even knowing what might happen. Here is a second story, again, that I found on Reddit, but this Reddit user had deleted their account, so the Reddit user just simply comes up as deleted. I was in the woods with the Boy Scouts once, and it was the end of the day, dusk, and I suddenly felt removed from the premises in a weird way. Not an out-of-body experience, couldn't see myself, but definitely had a strong sense like I was watching a movie of what was going on around me. It was pretty trippy and unsettling, lasted about 10 to 15 minutes. I was super young when this happened, so there was no drugs or alcohol involved. It just happened quite randomly, and even to this day, I don't know what exactly happened. So that was the second story that I found, and then I found a third story. So this Reddit user goes by the name of Bod has a TTVA. My grandma lives up in the mountains in a little house in this little mountain town of about 90 people. Tiny place, very remote very peaceful and beautiful. Her house is on an old dirt road surrounded by forests on all sides. No other house for about a mile. I spent a lot of my summers there. She currently lives out of state with a friend, so the house has been empty for about two years, and I drive up about once a year just for upkeep. So one trip, I'm there, and I go out on the front porch about midnight, and it's very cold, maybe 30 degrees, and pitch black, and I love it. Coming from the city, you never see darkness like this. Something I like to do is turn off the porch lights, close the front door, and then it's truly dark. It's like stepping out into space. So I turn off the porch light, close the door, then walk into the blackness until I'm on the dirt road. I just stand there in the cold, looking up at the stars. I'm out there for about five minutes. I start hearing something. It's faint. It's like a padding noise, but I can't really see anything because it's pitch black. The pads get louder like it's coming closer until my heart freezes. It's the sound of feet running on the dirt road. 
and it's coming in my direction, louder and louder. I turn and I sprint towards the house once I realize what the sound actually was. I almost screamed out loud. That's how terrified I was. I get in the door, slam it shut, heart pounding out of my chest. I turn on the porch lights and look out the window, but I don't see anything. I turn on every light in the house, go to every bedroom, and look out every window. But it's pitch black outside and you can't see a single thing. I could not sleep at all that night. The next morning, I went back outside to investigate the area. I went on the same dirt road that I was on the night before and found absolutely nothing. I saw nothing unusual. There was no footprints in the dirt and no disturbance whatsoever. So that was the third story that I found on the Oz Factor. The Oz Factor, to me personally, because a lot of you guys had asked me to like talk about it, it could be, you know, very real, you know, going from one parallel universe to another. Definitely, it is very scary. The thought of like every time you're down your hallway and you feel like someone is watching you, someone actually is watching watching you but from a parallel universe that's a little freaky to me the idea is very spooky but again just like that feeling of like disassociation or random you know feelings of dread that can easily be mental illness in general i definitely feel like some parts are a little bit spooky to think about but for the most part i don't really believe in the oz factor yes that was our third and final conspiracy theory i hope you guys enjoyed we talked about a lot today's video we talked about corporate manipulation and that every time you go into a grocery store all of your necessities are located in the back while the bakery is in the front making you super hungry and wanting to buy more we also talked about cat parasites and how your cat is currently trying to kill you essentially um because cats are the devil again not coming from a place of jealousy because i wish i had a cat they are so cute and fluffy and i wish i could hold one but if i hold one my throat will close up and i will break out into hives and then we also talked about the oz factor when i was reading up on the oz factor like the parallel universe thing i kind of thought of wanda vision weirdly how like in wanda vision um wanda kind of lives in like a reality that's not really a reality like sort of that in between of universes because sometimes like people from another universe come to the wandavision universe and like try to mingle with her that is all the conspiracy theories that i have for you guys today if you guys enjoyed or found this interesting make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to follow me on any of my socials like my instagram that will be linked down below as well as my p.o box if you want to send me anything and and as well as well my research for this video so if you found something very interesting if you're like oh my god this corporate manipulation thing is crazy i need to read more into it that will be linked down below I'll give you a little jump start into your investigation you know if you are doing your own investigation things on this and you come across something that's very very interesting or something that i just did not mention in this video Make sure to leave it in the comments below, you know, start a little conversation. Let us know your findings because I already let you know about my findings. I kind of went for 70s look today. I have these cute little earrings. I did um, like drawn bottom lashes because I just thought it was really, really cute. And I also have on this top that's kind of 70s. And a lot of people always ask me where I get my clothes from. I always thrift all of my clothes except for like a couple items. Like I get my tank tops from Target just because basic pieces like plain white tank tops or t-shirts or something like that those are a little bit more harder to come by in the thrift store just because like a lot of the plain items have really weird cutouts or designs on them I always buy from like actual stores when it comes to that stuff just because I know I'm gonna get my money's worth and I know I'm gonna wear it a lot today's video is super super fun I always love love doing these videos and if you guys have any suggestions on some conspiracy theories you want me to cover maybe you're scrolling through your for you and you see a little conspiracy tiktok send that my way through instagram because i don't have i do have tiktok i don't have it on my phone though i never use tiktok i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i will see you guys wednesday over there for a podcast episode, a true crime podcast episode. So if you're interested in any of that, you can subscribe and see me on my bed Wednesday, 
doing a little true crime. Have a wonderful rest of your day, drink some water, read a good book, go outside, slay the day away. I love you, I love you, I love you, and do something that makes you happy today.